So let's take a quick look at Finland, because there's a case there that has captured my attention. Uh, this is actually about a Finnish member of parliament who was charged for a tweet. And I realize that's something that's kind of going around in the Western world. It shouldn't be, but it is. Uh, her specifically was a Christian message. See, she belonged to the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Finland. And so she, she left this tweet. We'll go ahead and take a quick look at it, okay? All right, so here we are, and obviously it's in Finnish. I presume that's Finnish. It'd be weird if it was a different language. Um, we <laughs> translate, and it says, The church I'm a member of has announced that it is the official partner of CETA's Helsinki Pride 2019. How does the church's doctrine, the Bible, fit in with an idea where shame and sin are raised as a source of pride? And then this Instagram post that she linked to actually just goes to a Finnish version of the Bible quote from uh, right here, Romans chapter 1, verses 24 through 27. All right, so that was, that was what she was ultimately arrested and charged for. Now, this case, again, that, that was a tweet from 2019. It's still ongoing, but there was like a major development on March 30th, 2023, when the Helsinki District Court dropped all charges unanimously against her. But the prosecution appealed, and so it went to an appeals court, and that's where she's still waiting to figure out like what will what her life will look like. But in these cases, so often, you'll find that the process itself is the punishment. I mean, the very fact that she had to spend, you know, four years of her life battling for her freedom over this is is silencing of other people. It prevents other people from being willing to speak out to to share their Christian beliefs, for example, because they're afraid they may be charged and they won't have the resources that a medical doctor and member of parliament, as she is, has available to her. And in fact, she's also being supported uh, by the ADF International, it's the Alliance Defending Freedom International, to try and remove some of that burden. But I think this silencing effect is very much intentional by those, I'm just going to say who are on the left, but uh, by anti-Christian people who want to use their authority to silence through fear, which is ultimately what this is. I want to take you to a story about this, where you've got some kind of quotes from the prosecutor that really makes clear the opinions of of these people. So let's come over here. Yeah, I, I pre-highlighted because I hate to waste time. <laughs> All right, and yes, in green today because I'm feeling eccentric. So it says, in 2019, Rasanen, that's the woman I was talking about, a medical doctor and mother of five, posted a tweet in which she asked the leadership of her church why they would sponsor the Helsinki Pride Parade, and she attached a photo with verses from Romans 1. And that's what we already looked at. Now you can see down here, Rasanen, along with Bishop, I'm going to go with Johanna Poliola, that's my best guess, who published the 20, 2004 pamphlet, in addition, with three crimes under the section of the Finnish Criminal Code titled War Crimes and Crimes Against Humanity. Imagine being charged with war crimes. We'll just start there for just a second. Imagine being charged with war crimes for speaking out against the LGBT mafia. I mean, how unbelievable is that? Because it's like the real, the real crime against a person's rights is her being arrested for speaking. Right. Ultimately, that's that's what is egregious, and you could argue, I guess, a crime against humanity. The fact that they're treating her this way for exercising her religious beliefs and her and her right to speak freely about that which is true, and yet they charged her as if she's some kind of terrorist. Right, that's the implication that she's some kind of terrorist because she dared to question a pride parade, <clears throat> which is the same thing in the pamphlet, by the way. There's a tweet, a pamphlet, and she also defended biblical marriage, which is the only real marriage, um, on a on a talk show, or a radio show, actually. That was it. This is, this is what she's been dragged through the courts for, for four years. And again, it's still continuing, but let's, let's continue here. I'm gonna go down. And this is, this is interesting, because you've got the actual prosecutor here. He says, you can cite the Bible, but it is Rasanan's interpretation and opinion about the Bible verses that are criminal. Um, so in other words, you can cite the Bible if you want to like argue with it, <laughs> but not if you want to agree with what it says. 
Because then, then that's a real problem. I guess he would really like to just kind of ban the Bible outright, I, I would figure from this, but ultimately it's like you can cite the Bible but you can't actually say anything that is in agreement with it at all. But we're totally not anti-Christian because you can cite the Bible. So you see how free and open we are? <laughs> I mean, it, it's really kind of ludicrous uh, when you look at it. But she has ultimately refused to, to recant. She's refused to deny the teachings of her faith and I mean credit to her that's it's a position that she's in you know where she's she's a mother she's a doctor she's a member of parliament she has things to lose by taking the path that she has taken and yet she's done it anyway and I think that's you know it, she deserves credit for that ultimately though what you see going on around the world throughout the western nations is this kind of um bigotry to use one of their terms it's an anti-christian bigotry in which they believe that they can in some way moralize their actions against people for speaking the faith and so it's an it's an anti-christian persecution that is increasing throughout the west as the west becomes more secular over time it's also taking a very aggressive approach to to Christians who live their faith right it's see, it's fine for you to be Christian you just can't act like one that's that's the kind of theme so it's like it's fine if you're a Christian but you better bake the cake for the gay wedding it's fine if you're a Christian but if you're a photographer you have to go to the to the faux gay wedding and take the pictures and pretend like this is a real marriage and so on you know and it's like it's fine if you're a Christian but you can't speak out against abortion it's fine if you're a Christian as long as you don't speak against the pride parades so it, it's that but it's like, it found what you believe privately but as long, if, but we don't get to hear it ultimately so and a christian isn't someone who just says that they're christian privately it's someone who lives a christian life and that's why this is absolutely christian persecution that is spreading and getting worse and i think will continue to get worse for some time so that's why i want to draw attention to it because when you have something like this we're such a our countries are so connected now through frankly the internet that when something happens in one it kind of it spreads <laughs> and you, you see that it's spreading throughout I mean this sort of stuff isn't fully in the US yet I don't think certainly not to the same degree as you see in the UK Canada Australia Finland different parts of Europe that's where it's it's worse here the natural law roots you know in, in things like the Bill of Rights are strong enough that they kind of providing some resistance to it else would already be there but I don't think that's going to stand up forever I think there will be a point in which uh, these arrests will will take place here as well so people should start working working forward and, and creating communities where they can to resist what's coming if you enjoyed that video please don't forget to like and subscribe also share it with your friends I've got links in the description down below that can help you to support me in different ways thank you